All right, guys, so just going to be an update on Substance 3 Modeler here, and they've added SDF primitives, which is pretty awesome in the last update. So version 1.15, uh, and we'll play around with that and talk about some things along the way, but basically you create a new primitive like so. It's going to go ahead and create in the little outliner here, new primitive uh, container. And so you got your SDF primitive, and you can choose different shapes do things to them like chamfer them or add a fillet, round it out, things like that. Grab the handles, push it around. So some pretty cool stuff here, right? And surprisingly, this about puts it on par with Conjure SDF add-on um, with Blender. And actually, in some ways, it's better. Some ways, it's not maybe as good, but overall, it's pretty good. Let's just be honest. And it's uh, it's got what you expect for the most part. So. You can, you know, hit control D, duplicate the primitive, and you'll see we can do blends. The higher you go with the blend, the less performant it becomes. Uh, so one thing you might want to do is adjust the resolution. You can actually decrease or increase the resolutions of these shapes, which is nice. You can hold control, drag that out maybe. Control D, let's bring this up a little bit and uh, keep modifying this a little bit here. You can also set it to do a carve, as they call it, or subtract. Um, but you can also do intersects if you needed to as well, which is nice. And uh, we can change this blending amount however we see fit. I have different types over here as well, like extrudes, insets, grooves. I haven't got to play around with this too much to figure out what all of it does, but obviously repel does something like so. Kind of repels away from each other. So, uh, yeah, rather interesting little... Uh, set up there, right? Okay, so here's the fun part. We can continue to modify the shape how we see fit. We want less fillet on the bottom there, less rounded. We can do things like this still. Okay, but if we want to swap a shape, we can just choose shape and we can swap it. In our case here, it kind of doesn't really create a cylinder as you would expect. Uh, we could reset the position perhaps, or we can come over here. We can actually uh, refer it to primitive settings to default. And what this will do is, well, now it's a cylinder, right? Control click, flip it around, control drag, and you can do your adjustments like so. Add some blend to it perhaps, if it'll let me. Is that a bug? <laughs> I think that's a bug. Or it's not because it's the base. We can swap the order. There you go. Yeah, so it's definitely an interesting way of modeling. It's definitely useful in this application, and it feels very comfortable to have this here now. There's nothing too crazy about it at all. Just have fun, go crazy with booleans, not worry about things flickering in and out of existence, basically, which is real nice yeah, because of the way it works. Make anything we want for the most part. Turn that blend down. Oops, don't save it. So you're ready to save it, I guess. All right, so that would be that right there. We could keep modeling on this, of course. Um, you know, borrowing the base shapes. Try that again. Let's see if I did that right. You gotta send it out on this side. Maybe add a little repetition to it. Set it to subtract, control, click it down. Bring the side a little bit shallower. Now you can put these into groups for these, like subgroups, but they don't really influence, they don't like isolate things. I think they're supposed to, but I don't think it's working on my end. So it wouldn't be useful to actually use the groups, I think, too much right yet. Maybe it would be, I don't know. 
but you can see how fast it is at modeling. This is what's great about Substance 3D Modeler, anyways. You can see, you got a primitive shape. Control D, duplicate it, pull it out. We can convert it back into clay, as they call it. More or less, it's voxels, right? And it, it, it pretty much does it instantly, which is awesome. So if we want to smooth all this a little bit, we can just right click here. You can see we can use different smoothing types, linear, shape detection, smooth. Um, they kind of have a little description on what each one does anyways. As you can see when we right click on it. Okay. And so you might want to read that, but basically I have it set to smooth down, res it up, res it again, maybe down, res it twice or more. And every time you do that, it'll become smoother and smoother. So it's like a global way of smoothing, uh, which is real nice without using the brushes and whatnot. And so, yeah, this is going to be your voxel setup basically at this point. Uh, but that was your SDF primitives. So that's nice. And we can keep working on it. I mean, ultimately, this program is meant to be used with VR, but it's definitely useful in desktop still. Might be something you want to try out, experiment with, give it a real shot though. It's definitely pretty cool. And the main reason why I picked this up is I was really liking what guys were doing with 3D coat. Um, when it came to the voxel sculpting over in 3D coat, it was, it was pretty phenomenal, I thought. Um, but this looked like it was going to be kind of a similar kind of setup. And so I wanted to play around with it and just see how, um, how it ended up working out. And by the looks of things, it seems to do pretty well. Oh, nope. We don't use that one there. Got to turn that one off. Use symmetry in this case, press E or tab switches it from erase to clay tool, right? This also has a split tool crop and uh, this one has shapes and stamps so you can see that you can actually import like kit bash elements basically if you wanted to but we're go ahead and do this base bar done oh it's a little bit off let's try that again all right so that's the name of the game with substance 3d modeler it's pretty simple as it primitives now which is awesome and we can just go through and have a lot of fun with it, basically. It is, once again, usually meant to be used with VR. So some things are challenging to do in desktop, like um, repetition. So you're going to have to place things manually, try to get it the best you can. If you're going to try to add little details like this, they might not be spaced out perfectly. But it's still doable. We can reset this to the center. Double tap resets. If you reset it once, it just resets locally. So like if I rotate it, right, and I reset, it'll unrotate it basically. Reset again, it'll do a global reset. If you never had a chance to play with this, I highly recommend doing it. It's going to be... Um, I don't know if it's going to be the future of 3D modeling from here on out. A lot of people really like using CAD, which I don't blame them. But it's definitely cool to play around with it like this, right? It's purely artistic form shapes. It's uh, Boolean heavy. It's definitely fun to mess around with. You see how that one works out. Um, maybe we shrink that. Try that and just hit space bar while moving. Maybe do something like that. Control click in. Go all the way back across. Maybe do something like that. I don't know. I don't think that one sits as well for me, but could be interesting. Let's try adding it instead. So we'll pull the base back down a little. Do something like this. 
can hold control here, pull that out to the side. When you try to line things up at a surface level like this, sometimes it goes okay, sometimes not so much. Probably do it like that instead. And this way, later on, you can go in. Um, let's um, up res it real quick. One time. Yeah, you'll see it looks a little bit better now. So even just up resin it smooths some things out a little bit, so it's nice. Um, but yeah, you can go back later on with various tools and try to utilize these. They're really tricky, like the warp tool. Um, you have to set it to use the gizmo placement. And the way we'll use this, it's not going to really work out too well here. I just want to show you how you could use this real quick. Change like the hardness amount, perhaps. So you get a box within a box. So it'll be like 100% strength at the small one, right? Anyways, so if we were to just like hold space bar and move, we can do things like this, right? If needed. So if we had you know, hardness up to the max, hold space bar and do that. We could do things like this. You see when I let go of this, a lot of times it remeshes it real quick. And you don't even notice it doing it half the time, so it's rather interesting. But we can turn the strength all the way down. Yeah, we're only going to get so much play out of it doing that but the reason why i wanted to show this is because um, you can do some rather bizarre things with it so like you hold space bar and you move it and you think like that's all you can do but keep holding space bar after you let go of the click and you can actually rotate things too and do some fun stuff like that and if you want to rotate in another direction perhaps you could but once you let it go, it's kind of done. So it's up to you to determine like what you're going to do. But um, that's just with the the cube set up there. There's also like the elastic tool as well, which is very kind of similar, basically. Except it's got more of a uh, warping effect, right? Yeah, compressibility and strength. You, you can play around with these settings and see what you can get going on, basically. Imagine this one with a lot larger. It would be fun. Try out some big ideas, maybe. Right, let's um, see what we can do with it, maybe. Yeah, see, when you warp it, it's got to re remesh it real quick every time. All right. Uh, and then you got your regular sculpt tools, right? Build up tools, things like that. If you want to build things up, sure. You see, it's a raise tool, build up tool, inflate tool. Inflate's going to want to be used larger, more than likely. Otherwise, it gets a little weird. So that's not one. Anyways, um, increase as well. So increase some things. You definitely do that. Hit tab, go the other way with it, perhaps, right? And last but not least, we can do this. Press V, select this. Hit C, go back to the clay tool. Use this, set it to surface. Make it really small, perhaps. You could also change the shape of this if you wanted like a cylinder, maybe. You can taper it. So oh, it's kind of upside down. Um, not real sure how to correct for that one. Because like flipping selection is not going to do it, I think. So and it's not like a negative amount. So just chamfering would be our best bet right now. Tab, boom, right? Do some things like that, perhaps. All right, we have symmetry on right now. Let's see. 
We can do some radial symmetry across Y. We can um, go in here. Let's use um, click hold. No. I was going to try to pull it forward, but I want to constrain it so that it only moves forward. I don't know if that's going to work out too well. So we can try using placement tool. Stick it over here. Bring it in. This would be a good time to reset it, actually. Bring it forward. Bring it up. You can hold space bar and drag it forward like that. Do it slow. Substance 3D modeler for whatever reason likes when you do the edits like that slow. So it's just what it is, I guess. But definitely interesting, right? And it's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Not a lot to this program, really, um, in that sense, anyways. But you should check out some videos of guys doing time lapses, um, working on like mechs and things like that. They do they do really cool stuff, robotic designs and uh, even organics, just cool things. All right, let's see how that looks now. And there we go, as far as that's concerned, anyways. Yeah, so SDF modeling, I'm a big fan of it. If you're liking what you see here, you know, give this program a shot. See if it works out for you. And uh, that's going to be it for this video, anyways. So I'll check you out in the next one, all right? Take care.